Hey, welcome back everybody. <clears throat> so we've reached the big milestone here. What do I mean by that? Um, I got all the wiring pretty much complete and I had it running the other day and runs good. Sounds cool, pretty cool. We're going to give you a little taste of that. Let's get into it. Okay, so by whittling down all this wiring, we managed to get rid of all of this crap that we don't need anymore. This year, um, instrument cluster is kind of big and bulky and where would I put it, you know? Um, I find myself <clears throat> very rarely ever looking at the tack. I very rarely remember to look at it. Uh, I have one on my bigger mod um, and I almost never look at it, never remember to. So once you get familiar with how these engines sound, Need it anyway. Got. We got our battery mounted there. We've got very few wires there now compared to that mess I just threw in the garbage. <clears throat> we ended up with four switches. We've got power, ignition, fan. I like to be able to turn the fan on when I want. And alternator. So I'll show you what that's about because I have had questions about that in the past. So with this, with these Kawasaki alternators anyway, and I think this is one of the Suzuki ones I dealt with before. You've only got two wires coming out of here. You can see the connector right there. Everything you need to charge the battery is internal. It's got an internal voltage regulator and a solid state relay that turns it on. So when you get rid of the ignition switch and everything else, you have to have it on a switch so that when you're not running it, it doesn't drain your battery because it will if you, and I ran into that problem before. So <clears throat> the red wire coming from this alternator goes directly to the battery and the black wire goes from the battery to the switch back to the alternator. Very simple. So when you flip the switch on, it begins to charge. When you flip the switch off, it stops charging. If you hook both those wires to your battery, it'll work, but while it sits, it will be drawing a tiny, tiny bit of current, <clears throat> which is opening the relay inside the alternator. So after a week or so of sitting in the garage, <clears throat> you'll come out and it'll be dead. And I ran into that problem because I didn't know. So all you got to do is put a switch in, in between and, and interrupt it. And on these, on these Kawasaki bikes, it's the black wire. Now you may have to play with that. I don't know if they're all that like that or not, but just be aware that that could happen to you. So now what we have is very simple. There's our power wire. We've, I've got a, an inline fuse in there to protect my CDI igniter box. That's, that's the electronic igniter box that tells which, which cylinder to fire and when. And it comes from the pickup coil here. Now this is older technology, so it uses a it uses a pickup coil in here, which tells tells this igniter box where the crank is. And I believe they use crank sensors now, just like cars do. But this older one uses this. And it's very simple. Power coming in goes to that coil, to that coil, and then it comes back and it powers this igniter box. So you want to make sure you keep that plug. It's grounded separately. And that's it, folks. That's all there is to it. You don't have to do it this way, guys. If you want, you can keep all of that. You can keep the original fuse box. You can keep the ignition switch, the key. That's perfectly fine. I just find that there's a lot of wires on there that go nowhere. Once you've 
whittled it all down off the motorcycle. You've got rid of the lights, the horn, there's all kinds of things that you don't need. Personally, I prefer to have it simple. It takes a little more time when you're putting it together to get to that point. But later down the road, you'll appreciate the fact that you did that because it makes it simple. If you run into trouble, troubleshooting is much simpler now. Much simpler. You've got very little that you need to look at. Whereas if you kept that spaghetti mess, there's a lot more you got to go through to figure out what's going on. Now that's just one way of doing it. You don't have to do it that way. That's just the way I prefer to do it. And with these older with these older engines, there's very few of those wires you even need. That's just the way they are. Because of where my fuel tank is sitting now, the pickup from the fuel pump is lower than the level of the carburetors. Of course, on the motorcycle, the, the tank would be up here, so you can gravity feed into the carb, and that's, that's perfectly okay. But because of the way we've done it, we need a small fuel pump now to pump it up into the carb. So you want to make sure that you get a low-pressure fuel pump. You know, 3 to 5 PSI max is all you need, otherwise the carbs will flood. Um, I bought this aftermarket pump from a 89 ZX10, which I have outside. It has carburetors with a fuel pump on it, so I know that that, that pump works well. So that's what, I, that's what I purchased. And I've got it wired in to the ignition. I've also got it wired in to my, this is where my kill switch will go. I've just got it twisted together right now, but it goes up here. That way when you pull when the kill switch gets pulled, if it gets pulled, it kills the ignition as well as the fuel pump. So it doesn't keep on pumping if you've had some sort of a mishap. Okay? And that's that has simplified the whole setup. Fan, you only have two wires, you got a ground and a and a a power. Well, that goes to my switch right there. And um, as far as the starter, I've kept the original starter solenoid. The little starter solenoids that come with the motorcycles are of good quality and they're nice and small. You can fit them into very small areas. That, are, that has a built-in, you can't see it, that has a built-in fuse on it, 30 amp fuse on it. Um, this little light is our neutral. The light's on, that's neutral. Okay, and all that is, is over here, that's very simple as well, it's just one wire, it goes to that switch, so you power the switch from the battery, the other side of the switch goes to this wire here, <clears throat> so one other thing that's worth mentioning, that I have also run into in the past with ditching all this extra wiring. Um, as the years went on, um, some of the bike manufacturers, uh, Suzuki was a Suzuki engine I ran into this problem with. Um, on the Suzuki Bandit engine I did, they have a, what the hell is it called now? A, a diode in here, not a diode, a resistor, pardon me. They put a little resistor inside this key switch. Um, without that resistor, it will not start. The CDI box, the electronic ignition box, needs to see uh, whatever that, whatever the value of that resistor was. It was, I think it was 100 ohms. So if it doesn't see 100 ohms of resistance to ground, it will not start. They did that as a, the manufacturers did that as an anti theft device. It was, the earlier bikes were very easy to steal. You cut two wires and you could start the bike and take off. So, as an anti theft device, they, they put that inside here. Now, it took me several weeks of asking around and researching and 
trying to figure out what I had done wrong before I realized that that was in there. It doesn't show it on the manual. In the wiring diagram, it does not show that. Uh, I talked to a guy who was a, a drag bike guy. And a lot of the drag bike guys do the same thing I do. They just rip all that crap off and they have just a couple switches and away they go. And he told me that. So I went to Radio Shack and I got a resistor and I soldered it in and away we went. But it was a couple of weeks of head scratching before I realized what had happened. So if you don't want to go through that hassle, just be careful. Don't throw these things away until you get that running and running right. Because you may find you need it. Um, apparently some of the Hayabusa engines have a chip, a microchip in the key. So if you lose the key, it won't start. So be aware of that. Um, I did have one uh, Ninja engine, newer one that had it in the fuse box. It had a resistor in there somewhere and it wouldn't run without it. So, before you go tossing that crap in the garbage, make sure you get it running first. And like I said, you, you can keep all that if you so desire, it's up to you. Now I know, because I've used these earlier GPZ engines, that they don't have that. If you're not familiar with that, do a little research first, just to make sure. Because it can be a little bit of a hassle you may think you've blown the CDI box, you may think several things, yet it's just as simple as having a resistor in there. But just, I just wanted you guys to be aware of that, that can happen, okay? So guys, I know I skipped over that pretty quick, but uh, if you have any questions, any more questions that I didn't answer, leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Let's fire this up, let you have a listen. There are pumps charged up. There's our little, put a little choke to it. These bike engines do not like the cold. Quite often they will need to be choked. this alternator switch on you could hear it draw the engine down that means it's charging it's, it's putting a load on it charging the battery okay guys so in a nutshell that's basically how the, how the wiring goes what I like to do is if I get a complete motorcycle I start whittling down as I go so I get rid of the lights I follow the wires I get rid of them that way if you're lucky enough to have <clears throat> the maintenance manual for the motorcycle that you have, it's very handy. You can follow the wiring on the, on the drawing and it, it will help you. If you don't, just follow the wires. Get rid of one at a time. It takes a little more time, but it's well worth doing, guys. I, I believe so anyway. All right? So next time, I'm going to go over how I weighed this. I did weigh it. Um, I'm going to keep that a secret for the time being. I'm going to show you how I did it. With four cheap bathroom scales from Walmart, I'm going to show you how I weighed this. And uh, we'll show you what weight we're at. Don't forget, guys, this weekend coming, on the Sunday, I believe it is, we're having another indoor poll at the Reach Center in Clinton, Ontario. So watch for the videos for that. Come out if you can. Talk to you soon.